Hi everyone, welcome back to another guitar tutorial. Today is part two in the Learn Fingerstyle Guitar Playing Series. This is going to follow on from part one, uh, which I posted recently. Uh, it's really just going to take it onto the next level now. So if you haven't seen part one already and you're a beginner to fingerstyle, um, I'll put a link in the description below and you can go and check that out. Um, get the fundamentals under your fingers first and then perhaps come back and, and check this lesson out at a later date when you feel a bit more confident with the basics. So um, nothing too drastic today, we're just going to be adding in a melody line into the chord progression as well as um, adding in an extra string into the pattern utilising the third finger on our picking hand. Um, so again, you know, take your time, start slowly as we did before in part one, um, gradually build up and get your muscle memory really working on that picking hand and hopefully with a bit of repetition you should find this um, getting under your fingers nice and quickly. Um, if you enjoy the lesson please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, hit notification bell so that you're notified when all my other videos are posted. And uh, without further ado let's get cracking with today's lesson. So the chord progression we're looking at today is based around an 8 bar sequence. Um, the first 4 bars are actually based around a C chord. Um, we're going to be using a C add 9 chord in there as well. Um, then we've got an E minor chord for two bars and a G chord for two bars. So they're the chords we're going to be looking at today. Um, I'm going to play you the first four bars of the pattern uh, now, and so you can just get an idea of what we're doing. We're going to be adding in the little finger onto our C chord to make it a C add nine. I'll explain a bit more about that in a second. But here's the pattern played nice and slowly um, so you can hear what we're doing. So we're going to start with our C chord uh, and once again, just like we did in part one, the thumb is going to be alternating between um, two bass notes the entire way through this progression. Just remembering that when we play our C chord, we're going to alternate between the A string and the D string. And when we play the E minor and the G, we're alternating between the E string and the D string. Um, again, if you haven't seen part one, go and check that out. I'll explain a bit more about that in there. So first thing we're doing is playing the A string on beat one. And then beat two, we're going to play the D string and the B string at the same time using the thumb and the second finger. So that's thumb on the A string. And then thumb on the D string and second finger on the B string at the same time. Okay, then we're going to play the thumb again on the A string. So... Pretty straightforward so far. After that A string, we're going to then pick the open uh, G string with the index finger. And then the thumb's going to pick the D string straight after. So all together, the first bar sounds something like this. Here's the count for it. It's one, two, three, and four. Okay, so now we're getting to bar two. This is probably the, the trickiest bar um, of the whole piece, really. We've, we're starting by adding the little finger to the B string, third fret, and that's going to give us a C add nine chord, but we want to keep the kind of the, the C chord shape that we've got already, um, keep that in place, because we're going to be adding the little finger to that shape and then taking it away again, and that's going to give us our melody line um, in the chord progression. So we start of uh, the first beat of bar two is the third fret of the B string and the third fret of the A string played together with the thumb and the second finger of the picking hand. So that's going to sound like this. Then the thumb's going to play the D string, so that would be where again your C chord's being held down. It's still keeping your little finger on here and thumb playing the D string on beat two. And then on the end of beat two, the third finger of the picking hand is now going to play the open E string, high E string. So this is the thir first time really we've introduced that third finger of the picking hand. So, so far in this second bar, we've got... We then come back and play the A string with the thumb, followed by the B string with the second finger and your little finger should still be on that C chord at this point. So um, I'll recap from where we started the bar. So it's the C chord with the little finger on now, playing the A string and the B string together. 
then the D string with the thumb, third finger plays the open E string, A string with the thumb again, and then the second finger is playing the B string, where your little finger should already be on. Then we're going to play the D string with the thumb again, and then now at this point we're going to lift the little finger off and play the B string with the second finger, but this time it will be the first finger of the C chord that we're hearing. Okay, so that's quite a bit there to take in. So I'll just I'll play through it really slowly um, first, so you can see what's going on. Then we'll do the count for it. So here it is from the first beat of the second bar. Okay, so here's the count for that. One. So, if we go back to bar one and we put those two together, we should have something like this. Okay, cool. So, now we're going to bar three, and bar three, you'll be pleased to know, is identical to bar one. So, we're going to play that again. exactly the same as bar one. And then bar four is the same pattern that we were learning in the last video. So that's gonna be the A string, followed by the first finger playing the third string, the G. Thumb again on the D string. Second finger, B string. Thumb back on the A string. And then uh, open G string with the first finger. And then thumb plays the D string again. So. Let me go through that. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. So bars one, three and four are all fairly straightforward, you know, just variations on the same idea really. It's that bar two which is a little bit tricky. That one could take a little while to get under your fingers. So I would probably work on that one a little bit more until it feels comfortable. Um, but all four bars together should sound something like this. So that brings us now to our E minor chord, which is gonna be bar five. Um, we're going to play pretty much exactly the same pattern here as we did in bars one and three with the C chord, with the only exception being that we're now alternating the thumb between the E string and the D string, rather than the A string and the D string. So the pattern is going to sound like this. So that's thumb playing the sixth string, then string uh, the D string and the B string together with the thumb and the second finger back to the E string with the thumb again, open G with the first finger, and then thumb playing the D string. One, two, three, and four. Okay, pretty straightforward. So the next bar of E minor is gonna start with the thumb playing the low E and the third finger of the picking hand playing the high E, and that's gonna happen at the same time on beat one. Then we're gonna play the thumb on the D string. First finger plays the open G string. Thumb again on the low E. Second finger B string. Thumb on the D string. So one, two, and three, and four. And again, one, two, and three, and four. So if we put those two bars of E minor together, we're going to get something like this. And with the count, one, two, three, and four. One, two, and three, and four. 
Cool, and then finally, we're gonna have a look at the last two bars, which is gonna be with our G chord, and this is gonna be exactly the same um, finger pattern that we used for the E minor chord. So same strings, just literally changing to the G chord. So I won't go through that one by one, you'll kind of hear it as we go. It's gonna be one, two, three, and four. Okay, one more time. So if we put that all together and we start back at the beginning with the C chord, we should have something that sounds a bit like this. Here it is, one more time, sped up a little bit. So I really hope you found that useful. Um, it's a nice little pattern this and really really starts to introduce some more movement into the chord progressions, makes it a little bit more interesting. Remember, you can apply this type of thing. This is just to give you some examples of what's possible with, with um, some basic melody in the chords. You know, you can take this and apply it to your own playing, add it in different contexts, different genres and all that kind of thing. Um, again, just to reiterate, make sure you start slowly. Really get the patterns down under your fingers first before you start to build the speed up. We're really looking to be nice and even and accurate with it before you start to uh, increase the speed. So uh, a metronome again is always a really useful tool for some of your practice time with this. If you enjoyed the lesson, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, hit that notification bell so you're notified when the other videos are posted. Part three will be along soon. And uh, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again in the next one.